Today's workshop is on oral presentations. An oral presentation is more than just reading a paper or a set of slides to an audience. How you deliver your presentation is as important in communicating your message as what you say. Today I'm going to give you some simple tools to help you prepare and present an effective presentation. You should be working with your mentor on the content of your presentation, whether this is a presentation on your undergraduate research or on your internship experience. The first thing you need to do in preparing an effective presentation is to organize your thoughts. You have immersed yourself in this experience for an entire semester or even a year, and you have a whole experience you want to condense down into a short presentation. So before you even begin creating your slides, you should have an outline with logical transitions that the audience can follow. You want to have a strong opening. Well, what do I mean by that? You need to get the attention of the audience. Give them something that makes them want to listen further. You can often get their attention with a question, a question that they may have to wait and find the answer for, and it gives them a reason to listen to your talk. You're going to want to define your terms early. While you've been immersed in your topic or work for a semester or year, your audience has not. So you might have learned some jargon or some terms that your audience is unfamiliar with. And so you're going to want to prepare your audience for your talk by defining these terms early. And with everything we do, we need to edit, edit, edit. Streamline your uh, presentation by avoiding unnecessary wordiness. You can streamline your phrasing by eliminating all infinitives, all instances of the passive voice, all to be verbs. And if you need to cut more, think about cutting unnecessary adjectives. You want to keep your audience engaged by getting to the point, and you can only do that through editing. Now let's talk about using PowerPoint or Google Slides to actually create the presentation. One of the things you need to do is think about how that presentation looks and how it looks from the audience standpoint, not from your screen standpoint. So you need to use a large font, a font that's large enough for your audience to read it. And this font that I'm using on the second bullet is a 24 point font. The first bullet is a 34 point font. So it's going to be quite larger than what you expect to use typically. You want a clean typeface. Again, something that is easily read by both the front of the uh, auditorium and the back of the auditorium. And you want to use bullet points, not complete sentences with your text on the slide. Why is that? Well, one of my largest pet peeves is to have every word on the slide that is being said to me orally. When every word is already on the slide, I often think to myself, I could read this faster than you're reading it to me. So what's the point of this presentation? For example, if I were to right now say, 
How am I doing using bullet points rather than complete sentences? No one wants to read on a slide exactly what's being said by the presenter, and if they are taking the time to read, then there's no reason to listen to you. Right? Exactly what I have on the slide. And so you need to take that phrase that you want to say and distill it down to short bullet points. There's the six, seven rule, and that is you should have six bullet points per slide and seven words for item. Now, I haven't gone through this whole presentation to make sure I've done that, but so far I only have three main bullet points and my third one only has six words in it. You want to use contrasting colors. It can be hard to see dark blue on light blue or vice versa. So you want to make sure that your font pops out of the screen and grabs the attention of the audience. And you can do that with contrasting colors. And while I'm using special effects right now to present you now my fifth main bullet point, you want to use those special effects wisely. Because if you use too many fancy special effects, then your audience is going to be looking at that and not listening to what you're saying. So what should your presentation sound like? Well, you are talking about something exciting because you chose this undergraduate research project or this internship for a reason. So you should be excited. If you remember to be excited, your audience will feel it and automatically become more interested. But that excitement comes from a place of doing a project in your final years at Virginia Wesleyan that you've chosen and that you've wanted to do. So that excitement is real and you should express it. You need to speak with confidence. When you are speaking on this topic, you are the authority on your topic. You don't need to pretend to know everything, but if you realize that you're the expert on this presentation, it's okay to say you can't answer a question. And so when you give a live presentation, feel free to say, I don't know the answer to that question, but consider deferring the question uh, to one that you do know. I'll often say, hmm, that's a good question and I don't know the answer to it. But what I did find interesting in my project was, and then I'll go off on that tangent. Sometimes the questions don't really have anything to do with your project. So by doing that, you bring your audience back to the topic at hand. Now for an in-person presentation, you need to make sure to make eye contact and not spend all your time reading the screen. Your purpose is to communicate with your audience and people listen more if they feel like you are talking directly to them. As you speak, let your eyes settle on one person for several seconds before moving on to somebody else. You do not have to make eye contact with everybody but make sure you connect with all air areas of your audience equally. And if you feel uncomfortable doing this, seed your audience with friends. There's nothing wrong with telling your friends, hey, if you show up to my talk, can you not sit together so I can look at you as I speak in different parts of my talk? The audience itself doesn't know who you're looking at but it feels like you're speaking to them directly. 
You need to take your time on your presentation. Take pauses. It might feel like you're talking forever and time has slowed down, but you're not. And for most people, they speed up when they're giving a presentation. So you need to take conscious pauses, right? And when you take these pauses, don't fill them with filler words. You're often going to fill your presentation with ums, likes, you knows, um, look here, and whatever that go-to word is for you. And you might not even know you're saying it all the time. And that brings me to my next point. And that is you need to practice your talk. You need to practice your talks for a lot of reasons. The first one being it helps you get rid of those filler words. The more times you practice the talk, the more comfortable you are with it. And the more comfortable you are with the talk, the less you feel the need to fill in every blank space. But you also want to practice your talk so that your talk goes for the allotted time. Now, whether you're doing this presentation virtually online or in person, you're going to get instructions on how long your presentation should be. And nobody wants you to run long. And nobody minds if you are right at the minimum length. But if you do run long and you babble along, your audience brain will turn off. You know that because you've had that experience. You've had that experience in class or at a presentation where that professor maybe just keeps droning on and on after the class is supposed to end and you don't listen after that class is supposed to end and your audience won't listen to you either if you drone on. The only way you can make sure you stay to the allotted time is to practice. You can practice by yourself in a room and have your everything set up so you can go through your presentation professionally multiple times and you can practice in front of friends and those friends will tell you if they understand your talk, if it made sense, They'll tell you if you used a lot too many filler words and if you made eye contact. But all of these practices will make it seem like you know what you're doing. And in fact, you will know what you're doing. And finally, these practices will help you relax. Take a deep breath and even enjoy yourself. And you should always remember to add humor to your talk, to give yourself a break, and to give your audience a break and something to maybe even laugh at. Finally, you should never forget to acknowledge the people who supported your research. Whether you are doing undergraduate research or an internship, you've had a faculty member that has helped you find that internship or has helped you through the research process. And you should acknowledge your mentors, your advisors, the class faculty if you're in a research or internship class. And if you've received funding to do your research or to go to a conference, you should acknowledge that as well. So I am just going to quickly go through an example presentation, one that I've given in the past to talk about my own personal research. I'm not going to give you the whole presentation. That would be too long. But I'm going to show you how I set up my slides for different sections of that presentation. And I'll start with my title slide. So in, for this presentation, I'm talking about loggerhead sea turtles and their ability to hear throughout ontogeny. 
And for many of you, I may already need to define a term, ontogeny, which is a term that if you're not a biologist, you might not know. And uh, ontogeny is different life stages. So hatchling, juvenile, adult. So this title lets you know exactly what this talk is going to be about. How do turtles hear through different life stages? I have both my name and my collaborator's name on the title slide. And yes, my collaborator is my husband. I have where we work and also the funding agency. I start off my background with three bullets that are going to give you an idea of the issues involved in doing my project. There is growing concern over anthropogenic sound, another term I probably have to define for you, which is human made. In our world's oceans, humans are dumping a ton of sound in our oceans and we don't know the impact. I work with an endangered species, so collecting that data is difficult and I explain why. But as you see here, I put humor in immediately in my slide, or at least I think it's funny because it's a play on words with a, a herring aid. It's giving me a haddock. Now I know it's a dad joke. But those dad jokes can still make people laugh sometimes, and I put it in here. Whether you've done a research project on, in biology or the sciences and you've used an animal, in the social sciences and you've used a group of humans, in the humanities and you've used a period of time as your research or uh, documents, or um, uh, uh, writings as your research, you need to uh, identify it and introduce it. And so for me as a biologist, I need to identify the animals I worked with and I give background information with this slide. And I go through these different species and where they live and uh, whether they're endangered or not. And instead of putting up all of this information as bullets, I talk about these animals through showing pictures. If I show a picture that I've gotten from a book or a journal article or the web, I have to cite it. And so I'm showing you this slide so you see how to appropriately cite your sources. And those citations need to be on all of your slides. You see here a figure on the life history of sea turtles, and I've taken it from a textbook, and so I've cited that appropriately. And another figure on how the currents move in our Atlantic Ocean, and that has come from a web page. Now, clearly, after I set up my question and the background information, I'm going to talk about my methods. I'm going to talk about my data. I won't show you slides on that, but I want to show you one last slide, and that's the acknowledgement slide. You should always acknowledge the people you worked with. In this case, I worked with researchers at different institutions. I worked with graduate students and I worked with undergraduate students. And so I put them up there because they did critical work on this project. I also acknowledge my funding agency again. And so if you receive funding from on campus or off campus, both of those need to be in this location. And I acknowledge the institutions that this work was done at. Well, I hope this workshop helped um, describe how to put together a presentation for your undergraduate research project or your internship. Please feel free to contact me if you have any additional questions or concerns on presenting your work. I can always be reached at my email, 
which can be found on the website, but it is also sbartol at vwu.edu. Have a good day.